Today I have with me a wonderful comedian, a writer, producer who is not only known for his stand-up comedy but has also been a writer on the highly acclaimed show The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I have with me Noah Garden Swartz. So f- glad to finally get to speak to you Noah. Thank you for doing this. Very good to be here. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um your bio in your official website has this hilarious statement about your career before stand up comedy do you remember what it says yeah yeah i know what it, it says, yeah i know with exactly. your permission can i say it of course <laughs> it says uh, before turning to stand up full time garden swartz worked as a journalist hedge fund day trader elementary school teacher and even grew weed though obviously not all at once <laughs> so <Right. laughs> you got to live so many different experiences how does that inform your writing and your stand up uh, i mean i think from writing and stand up it it really just speaks to a broader perspective that i can bring into my work so you know anytime you work in the creative field and certainly in writing the more of a life you've lived the more perspectives and experiences you can draw upon the more inspiration you kind of have to write about things so it certainly helped from stand up and then with respect to tv writing again it's just having experiences in different jobs interacting with different people allows you to more accurately write different types of characters yeah yeah it also i think it's because it's so personal to you it's so much more creative like for me that one of my favorite sets that you did was i think on the on the conan show when you're describing the four sentence types Yeah. Uh that it's I've never heard a joke like that. <laughs> like the way you had broke it down for kids and then you broke it down for adults. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean teaching teaching definitely um helped with stand up in terms of just like you said learning how to communicate information to kids. Yeah. Stand up really is very much about communicating information. So, it's just kind of applying that same theory to adult audiences and and yeah. the skills that really translates. Yeah. Uh in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which has been one of my recent favorite shows, it's uh, so well done. Um you were involved as a writer, a story editor, and a stand-up consultant. So, Can you take us through the process of the work involved when you're a part of the show's writers room? Sure. So, um the show creators, Amy Sherman Palladino and Daniel Palladino are legendary TV writers. Um so when you when you have people like that at the leadership of the show, it makes it really easy for the show to succeed. So, so many of the reasons people love the show is because the creators had such a strong vision for what they wanted both in terms of you know they ran the writers room they were the directors they were the music supervisors so they really came with a very clear vision of what they wanted to do which then helped all of us writers understand our job more clearly because they were very specific about what they were looking at from us so Um you know every year the writers room was a little bit different in terms of there was a shake up of writers every year um but the process was very much letting the creators Amy and Dan kind of let us know the overarching theme or vision they had for the season then we would all come together as a room and start talking about storylines for individual episodes and individual characters and then once we kind of had the broad picture of the season painted we would go into each episodic script and whoever was writing the script which was usually Amy or Dan they would kind of do the majority of the writing on the script and then come back to us for punch up so for myself for stand up consultant they would say we know Midge does stand up in this scene or we know Midge is at a comedy club and there's going to be three other comedians doing stand up here's what we would like the jokes to be about and then we would go back and write jokes or write a stand up routine and kind of plug it into the script and then once the script is fully written we would all go through and take another pass for edits or if we had any joke punch up then you do a table read to hear if the script actually works with the actors and an audience and then from the table read you kind of do one last retooling of anything that needs to be rewritten or adjusted and all of this happens like way before anything is shot right for any season i guess yeah so i mean every show every show is different um but with respect to Mrs. Maisel 
yeah, the script is completely done before it was shot, but we would write one script, shoot that script, and then go back and do another script. So we didn't write the entire season's worth of scripts before we shoot, but we would have the script completely done before that episode got shot. Right, right, right. Correct me if I'm wrong, you're based in New York City? Uh, yeah, so I was in New York City for uh, 10 years. And then my wife and I, during during COVID, we moved to Los Angeles for okay. two years. And we actually just two weeks ago moved to Las Vegas. So I, I bounced around oh, a bit. Right, I'm, right. Now, I'm now living in Las Vegas. Okay. But, you, but to... I, was, I was in New York the whole time that I was writing for Maisel and I was there for like 10 years doing stand-up. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you spent a long time in New York and your heritage is Jewish and you're a stand-up comedian. I mean, these are very similar to the character of Miriam Maisel. It's very similar to the world of the show. Yeah. How much of those experiences sort of help inform this the writing in the show? Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, on one hand, like you said, for all those reasons, I lived in New York. I am Jewish. I do stand up. So there was yeah. a lot that I could relate into the character. Yeah. Um, but then at the same time, it took place in the late 50s, early 60s, which is a completely different time, both in New York for Jews in America and certainly in the world of stand-up comedy. So it was kind of a 50-50 split where on one hand, certainly for the Jewish scenes, like having that cultural background and that knowledge helped make sure that there was accuracy to what I was writing for the characters with respect to the religious scenes. Um, and with stand-up, just as a fan of stand-up before I became a comedian, I had a historical knowledge of sort of what that Catskills era comedy was like. Oh. But, um, you know, for, for everything I did know from my background, there was equal parts things I didn't know or had to go back and research or look up to make sure that it was uh, period specific and accurate for the time. But yeah, I mean, obviously being a Jewish comic in New York helped. Yeah, yeah. It, it certainly made it easier than not being any of those things. Yeah, I mean, because it's such a distinct world, right? I, I don't think it's, uh, you, you can't compare it to other shows in terms of, you know, style or the milieu, yeah. whatever it is set in. Stand-up is obviously a big part of the show. It has several key scenes. I mean, I like to call them like set pieces, big set sure. pieces. Yeah. And uh, me just, you know, performing all of these set pieces and obviously writing jokes or even a great stand-up set, whether it's in Maisel or in real life, it's never easy. Uh, all these sets are so crucial to the story. They're not only funny, but they reveal character. They sometimes advance the story. They sometimes highlight the themes of the show. So how do you go about writing these sets for the show when you're as a comedian? How do you? What's your thinking and writing process for that? Well, so... Not always, but the majority of the time we knew what was happening in the episode before we were, the stand-up was usually the last thing to go into the script. So as you said, a lot of times Midge's, Midge's stand-up either reflected what we had just seen in the episode or was going to advance the story. But either way, we always had context as to what Midge's stand-up needed to be about for the purpose of her life outside of stand-up in the script. So... So that's just sort of by doing it that way, by knowing that Midge's stand-up was overwhelmingly going to be talking about her life and by knowing what's going on in her life before or after that set, it it informed us on the kind of jokes we need to write. So it really narrowed yeah. it down. Yeah. Uh, in IMDb, it mentions you were a story editor on seasons two and three, and it's a key position in the writer's room. What are the responsibilities of a story editor? So the truth is, um, again, every sh every show is different. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, the writers in America, American television writing, we belong to something called the Writers Guild. And, and the Writers Guild kind of has different job titles where if you get brought back season after season, it's not guaranteed. But if you get a promotion or are kind of rewarded for making it to another season, you go up in job titles. So even though there are slight tweaks to what you may or may not do season to season. Like when I was just a stand-up consultant, I did less overall story pitching or less overall script writing and focused much more on the stand-up. As a story editor, I kind of had 
a closer eye on possibly pitching stories for the season or for characters. But by and large, my job was the same every season. And it was just a matter of logistic title changing according to the union that I'm a part of. Okay. Okay. And again, it, it, it may be different on, on other shows. The story editor may have right. a very different job than a consultant or a writer. But for me, right. my job was fairly similar every season. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm presuming you might be touring or I guess performing stand up currently. Yeah. So I, I definitely am performing, um, whatever city I'm in, I perform consistently in that city. Um, yeah. I used to tour a lot more before I got the job writing. Um, I used to tour 20 to 30 weekends a year. And then, oh, wow. you know, once I started writing, I had to be in New York for the job. So that slowed it down. And then when COVID hit, there was like three years of live performance that got really shut down. And in that time, my wife and I also had two children. So right now I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old and it's much harder to leave and go do shows on the road because I don't want to leave my wife at home with two young kids. So yeah. uh, I'm currently not really touring, like maybe once a month I'll get out on the road and do a show. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm not cur currently touring very much. But I did just shoot a special and have a new album and a special that will be coming out in, I think, November. So people can look out for that. Oh, lovely. Lovely. And actually, one of, one of the earliest places I toured, I actually went and did stand up in India um, in, I want to say, 2012. Okay. I came to visit the Jewish community in India. So I spent like a week and a half in Mumbai and Kerala uh and Jewtown. Oh yeah. The Jewish communities of India. And then I yes. did a stand up show for them at the end. It was great. Oh yeah, that that's great. Wow. There is a small community, yeah, definitely. In in uh Bombay. Uh I think in Kerala you said? You mentioned yeah. Kerala, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think Kochi there is a Yeah, small Kochi, community. that's it. Yes, yeah. I was in Kochi, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, lovely. I'd and love to come back. Oh yes. We'd love to have you. <laughs> I was curious, do you have a favorite character from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? Or is there any kind of that you feel? Um, I mean, I, I have soft spots for okay. so many of the characters. Yeah. Um, obviously, Midge and Susie are special to me just because that's yeah. the core of the show, their relationship. And I think... Rachel and Alex, the actresses who play those roles, are so wildly talented, and it was great to work with them and see them do their work. Um, Moish was kind of a personal favorite just because he sort of reminded me of some of the older Jewish relatives of my family. Um, yeah, and then yeah. and then Abe was was fun to watch. Like Tony Shalhoub is such a fun actor. He's the one out of all the actors. He's the one that you know. I told you we would write the scripts and then do a table read. He's the one where sometimes I would see lines written in the script and I'd be like, oh, I don't know if that's funny or I don't see how that's going to work. And when Tony reads it, he could read the phone book and it's funny. So, wow. you know, I, I always uh, enjoyed Abe, Moish, and then Susie and Midge were kind of the four that that I, I liked the most. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I mean, uh, not just the writing, the actors also uh, take it to another level um, when they're given those words and... Uh, that kind of writing to deal with. Absolutely. Um, I was curious, uh, what uh, got you involved in this, in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? What brought you into this project? Uh, so it was my background in stand-up. For season one, they were looking for a stand-up consultant to kind of help with the stand-up scenes. And um, I had just shot a special for Comedy Central. And so my agent sent my special, my comedy special to the Paladinos, the creators of the show. Yeah. And they liked it enough to interview me for a role in the writer's room. And then from there, it just kind of grew. But but my relationship with the show all started from my background in stand-up and them wanting to have a comedian in the room to kind of help with those scenes. Yeah, I think it really helps because uh, I guess stand-ups will know exactly what's funny and what works right i mean the 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 show is ha is really banking on the fact that midge has to be really talented it has to be yeah. really funny so without that it 
you know it falls flat so yeah yeah and i mean writing writing funny jokes was certainly important but more important for consulting and stand up is not even about making sure the material is funny it's about making sure the essence of the performance is correct or understanding what it feels like the nerves or the frustration before a set or yeah. or the highs or the lows after a good or bad set it was more about the emotional feeling of doing stand up than it was the actual material but it's obviously true. we worked on both it's true it actually reminds me of something i had listened to a podcast uh, amy sherman palad knows part of where she said that she wanted the show to sort of show mage evolving she didn't want a polished comedian in the beginning yeah um, yeah and it show like it's true with each set you're seeing a different kind of personality and behavior and it's changing each season um uh even from the confidence level all of that yeah what are the skills and requirements one needs to pursue stand up that no one has ever told you uh i mean so the industry has changed so much over the last literally 3 to 5 years stand up has completely shifted because of the internet and social media so um it's something that i'm not very good at and and something that i've seen a lot of my peers kind of surpass me in touring and selling tickets and stuff like that because of this skill set that i don't possess which is being good at technology or being good at social media i mean right now that is one of the most important things to actually like grow a career in stand up because right now there's no barriers to entry to growing your audience nationally internationally you no longer need to be in the city where people are for them to see you you can make something on your phone and the entire world can see it so even though it's not something i used for my own career if there was a young kid right now who was telling me i want to get started in stand up and i want to be successful I would tell them to pay attention to the technology involved with kind of growing your stand up. Okay. So thank you Noah. Thank you so yeah, much for doing you. this. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful talking to you. I appreciate you having me on and good luck with the podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Take care. You too. Bye. Let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments below. If you really enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. If you like such content and you want to see more of such content please do hit the subscribe button thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time